Good day and welcome to another exciting episode of Insider's View. I'm Melissa Handrahan. Today we're getting up close and personal with a newly elected councillor in the city of Brampton. He's representing wards 9 and 10 and his name is Gurpreet Singh Dillon. Welcome to the studio. Thanks so much for having me and I want to thank you and I want to thank everybody at home for tuning in. Well, I want to start with uh, why you decided to run, because you took on an incumbent mm -hmm. uh, who was uh, there for quite a long time. In fact, he was the first Sikh uh, Canadian ever, I think, elected into city council. Right. And uh, his name was Vicky Dillon. Right. So you guys happen to have the same last name, and I'm just curious to know why you chose to challenge him in the Ward 9 and 10. Well, I didn't have a, a lot of political background. I didn't come from a political family. But what I did start to notice was that um, our city wasn't moving in the direction that I, I would like it to move in. Um, so I made a decision that I'm going to run. Um, and the whole community got involved. So uh, I think that helped me a great deal because we had a good message. We had an honest and positive message that we want to stop the corruption, but we also want to take the city into uh, the right direction. So that's why I ran. And fortunately, we were, we were able to win. Yes, and very successful, so congratulations Thanks. to you. How has it been so far before we get into some of the details? Um, well, it's been about, uh, I would say, two months now I've been on the job, but it's been very busy but, and hectic, but uh, I, I enjoy it. I, I like getting out and meeting people. Um, I like uh, being able to know what's going on, but uh, uh, overall it's been very, very enjoyable, and, and I like it so far. Okay, well, I'd like to get into some of the details as to uh, what kind of corruption was in the city of Brampton before that you mm -hmm. referred to? And, uh, you know, what was your message to the community to try right. and clean it up? Because most politicians do say that, mm -hmm. you know, that they get into politics for the right reasons. They right. want to clean things up. But, but what was it specific that you had to uh, address? Well, if you take a look at the scandal that we had, I think it started in, in uh, August, I believe. And there was a report that came out that there was misuse of taxpayer money. Uh, and I think that's unacceptable. I think we all, as taxpayers, work hard for our money and we expect uh, proper use of it, whether we're spending it on services or whether we're spending it for uh, city use. Um, so that was one thing. Uh, but uh, what we've done so far is we've been very transparent in, in our council. We've uh, actually, our budget uh, deliberations are coming up and we've invited people to come in and say, listen, uh, instead of us telling you what to spend the money, uh, what we're going to spend the money on, you come and tell us what's important to you. Uh, and we're going to listen to you. We want to have a community-based discussion rather than just the council making uh, decisions like we did in the past. So uh, transparency is key, and I think that's one of the, the main things that we've done that's different from councils of the past. Okay. And councils of the past, uh, we obviously are talking about uh, the former mayor, Susan Fennell. Right. And uh, she has recently been uh, acquitted of all charges mm -hmm. related to uh, the scandal that, that was put forth on, on what she uh, mm -hmm. supposedly misspent. Right. So what are your comments on that? Well, I think if you take a look at uh, the actual criminal charges, there was a criminal investigation, but they still violated city policy. Uh, and so I disagree with uh, anybody uh, in our council who, uh, who violated policy. Some people used it for personal use. Uh, and I think that's unacceptable. Uh, but I also think that uh, any council member who was in the, past, uh, uh, in the past council, they all charged that Susan Fennell uh, was criminal, criminally responsible. So, um, you know, I, I, I think we need to put that in the past. Uh, they violated policy, uh, but we need to look forward and we, we need to make sure that we're as transparent as possible and inclusive as possible for all residents. Well, besides cleaning up Brampton, what are some of the other changes you would like to specifically mm -hmm. make in wards 9 and 10 in your new role? Well, what I've seen is that we pay essentially $1 uh, in taxpayer money to $1 paid for city salary. So that's something we want to take a close look at. I brought that up, a motion up that we have staff examine the possibility, the potential for doing a citywide freeze on salaries. Um, I think what we've done is grown bureaucracy in the last 10 years rather than focus on growing our city more. So uh, we got to look at the bottom line of, of the taxpayer uh, and make sure that their money is going back to them, not going into the pockets of uh, or the increased salaries of city staff. Another thing I want to make a change in is the way we hire our youth for summer jobs programs. Uh, what I'm working with now is uh, speaking with the Peel region to give us those at-risk children 
or children who gen tend to generally get in trouble and say, listen, you know what, we're going to give those jobs to them. So in partnership with the PO school board, what happens is when we get children working who are at risk, it gives them a feeling of self-worth, of dignity, and it gives them a good start to their career because they get work ethic and they say, hey, you know what, I like making money. Um, so that carries on throughout the future and what it also does is if you look at uh, some inner cities in the states, these types of programs also bring down the crime level. So I think it's a win-win situation if we get those kids uh, working in the summertime. Okay. Well, we want to find out also what the working relationship is with Mr. Dillon and our new mayor. So we'll find out right after this break. Welcome back to our up close and personal chat with Gurpreet Dillon. So we have a new mayor in the city of Brampton. Mm -hmm. It's uh, none other than Linda Jaffrey, right. and she's a former um, cabinet minister, a former member of provincial parliament. She has a lot of uh, experience under mm -hmm. her belt, and she's probably coming in from a different perspective for the city. Mm -hmm. So we're curious to know what is your working relationship been like with her so far? Well, I'd also like to mention that she was a city councillor for about 12 years before she was an MPP, so I think she brings a great deal. Um, she has uh, municipal experience, she also has uh, provincial experience, she was a minister, so uh, the working relationship has been a good one. She's uh, very uh, approachable, mm -hmm. you know, she comes down um, to where the councillors are, uh, our offices, uh, quite, a, quite a bit. So. Uh, we have a, a very, uh, I guess you would say, a good working relationship, but uh, uh, the ease in which we're able to approach her and her staff, I think, uh, has been good so far. So, uh, so far, so good. Do you think it's to the city's advantage that uh, we have a, a current liberal provincial government and she also is part of that uh, extended family? Uh, so do you think that the mayor is going to have a very good working relationship with the province and, and is mm -hmm. really going to help to get... Uh, more services and perhaps more more help from the provincial right. government for the city of Brampton? Well, I'm sure it couldn't hurt, uh, but at the same time, I think the the mayor and the council's first priority is, is the city of Brampton. And uh, uh, if she has a good relationship, I think that's to our advantage. Uh, but I think the province and uh, the, the city know that, you know what, uh, we need to do what's best for everybody. So, uh, if, like I said, if it's a good relationship, it's good but uh, I don't think it could hurt. Okay, well let's talk about the budget because you've talked right. about cleaning up the city of Brampton. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the tidbits that you can release to the public, the inside perspective right. on, on what we can expect from this budget apart from the consultation? Well, I think the first thing I could say is that this entire council knows that we have to bring change. Um, I think in the past 10 years or so, the McCarter report came out, so there was an audit done and it showed that our flexibility going forward was, uh, I wouldn't say hampered, but uh, limited uh, as to what it should be. So we understand that, uh, again, I'm talking about the bottom line of the taxpayer. So the bottom line of the taxpayer is, at the f is, is, is the first and foremost thing that we're going to be looking at. So we actually um, have two dates, February 18th at City Hall from 5 to 9 p.m. and March 24th at Gore Meadows Recreation Center from 6 to 9 p.m. It's an opportunity, it's an open house, it's an opportunity for the residents to come and uh, basically tell us what they want in the budget, what they don't want in the budget and what's important to them. Some people might want to raise taxes but have more facilities. Some people might say, hey listen, let's sacrifice uh, some of the services or facilities uh, to give us a tax break. Uh, and there's no real right or wrong answer, but what we want to know is what everybody's thinking. So that's why we've, we've invited them in. Uh, and as I mentioned before as well, we have a lot of our uh, taxpayer money going to salary. We've also uh, made a decision to cut back on some of the grants we give to certain programs. Uh, for example, Brampton uh, Downtown Development uh, Corporation. Um, there might be Safe City we're going to be looking at. The reason is, is because we want to give community groups money, but we want to make sure that there's a return, that we see direct benefit to the city from them. So there's a lot of things we're going to examine. Uh, but the main thing is we want people to come and let us know what's important to them. 
Okay. One of the things that's very important, of course, is uh, cleaning up the city. And right. we're experiencing a lot of snow this year, and uh, it's probably not as bad as last year. But mm -hmm. do you think that in the budget we're going to be able to cover all of the emergency services that might be required for this year? Well, uh, I don't think the snow is bad as last year. Last year we had a lot of snow. Uh, but what we have to understand is that our system is not perfect. Um, there's room for improvement, and that's what uh, I've tried to focus on. So I've requested our staff to give me uh, the model used by other municipalities and what their process and procedures are, and compare it to ours. Now, can we get to, uh, a lot of things? Sorry, a lot of the um, residents are complaining about something called windrows, W-I-N-D-R-O-W-S, windrows. So those are the big wall of snow that's left in front of your driveway after the snow plow comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen it before, I've experienced it before, and it's uh, kind of annoying to clean it up right after you clean your own driveway up. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is uh, there's the technology out there where an arm comes out and cleans that up also. I want to know, can we get that in for next year or maybe the year after? So that's why I've requested that information. I want to know, hey, maybe can we add that onto our current technology, the contractors that we use, can we change contracts? So we want to examine all options and we want to make sure that the residents are happy, but we also got to stay within our budget. So we're going to examine all options. Okay. One of the complaints that uh, we've heard here at Insider's View is that um, a lot of seniors are getting pushed to the side in the city of Brampton. And uh, for example, they don't have computer literacy mm -hmm. and so they can't access a lot of the services because the city of Brampton's moving more towards getting things online. Mm -hmm. What's your view on that? Well, I'm part of the Seniors Council. I've had a chance to listen to a lot of their uh, issues and concerns, but I can say that we have something uh, called, uh, well, we have 311. So whether you're on your uh, local uh, home telephone or whether you're on your cell phone, if you dial 311, you can call in and, and voice your complaint or your concern, or if you have a question, you can get that uh, question answered. But there's 10 different languages. So if you're Punjabi, you can get it uh, the service in Punjabi. Or if you're Hindi, you can get it in Hindi as well. So uh, that's something very important. We do realize that we're headed towards a more technology-based service model, but at the same time, 311 is always in there, and then if anybody wants to call me, they can always call me okay. any time of day. Well, on that note, calling uh, Mr. Dillon, we will get a little bit more personal with him after this break. Welcome back in conversation with Gurpreet Singh Dillon. So, I'd like to know if you're one of the politicians that hands out your cell phone number so that constituents can reach you at any time. Well, I do hand out my cell phone number, but uh, generally what I do is tell people to email me or call the office line because I get such an, uh, a, a, a great amount of calls that it's hard for me to juggle. So my assistant uh, usually uh, schedules a call back or she can answer the question herself as well. But uh, email, I have my Blackberry in my hand all day. Um, I guess much to my wife's chagrin that uh, when she's talking to me, I'm usually typing away, sending an email. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm easily, uh, uh, I'm, anybody can contact me at any time. Do you feel a lot of pressure in work-life balance now that you're a city councillor? I'm sure that you get calls on the weekends mm -hmm. and people want to uh, use up your time mm -hmm. and have you over to their house right. and attend their functions. Mm -hmm. How do you balance all of that? Um, well, I think the first and f foremost uh, thing that uh, helps me is having a very uh, supportive family, especially a supportive wife. Um, she's, you know, totally uh, understanding that uh, I do have a, a little bit more uh, busy life now, but uh, we have a good working relationship with each other. We, you know, every evening I come home, you know, we might plan out the next day, but we always make sure that we uh, spend time with each other. Uh, by the way, happy Valentine's Day to Kabul, my wife. Uh, but uh, we also make sure we spend time with the kids and the family as well. I think that's uh, the first and foremost uh, uh, thing we do. But uh, at the same time, we have to make time for the residents as well. So we have a good balance and uh, we have a good working relationship. And speaking about your personal life, mm -hmm. um, what were you doing before you got into uh, city council? and? Uh, what are the, some of the features, like in terms of your extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. that you'd like to promote about yourself? Well, I was a business analyst at uh, Rogers uh, up on Dixie Road, and 
I was very involved in the community for about 15 years. I ran a lot of kids programs. Uh, I was involved in the police, working with uh, seniors groups, uh, working against crime uh, within our youth as well. So um, I was very interested in, in occupied and making our community better. So that's why I kind of uh, drifted towards politics as well. I had a background in community service. So, um, you know, we're about to uh, start up some of our programs again. They've been on hiatus since uh, the election this past year, but uh, I'm really excited to get back involved in the grassroots of the community because that's, uh, I guess you could say, my base. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's been a, a, a busy transition for me, but uh, hopefully very soon we'll, we'll be able to start working with kids again and working with seniors as well. Okay. Now that you have a taste for politics, mm -hmm. is there anything in your future that could say you could run provincially or federally? Mm -hmm. Any interest? <laughs> uh, you know what, I, I'm enjoying what I do now. Uh, it's uh, very busy uh, and I think municipal politics has, allows you to get within uh, the grassroots and have a face-to-face uh, -face connection with people and that's something I really enjoy, um, that one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction that I have. So. Uh, down the road, anything can happen, but uh, right now, uh, in the near future, uh, I'm going to stick with, uh, with municipal politics. And what do your kids think about you being in politics? Well, my kids uh, are, uh, one is uh, five, uh, almost six, the other one is uh, one and a half, and uh, I don't think they know too much, except the older ones, like, Papa, you know, why are you coming home late to come home early? So he's starting to notice, uh, but we always stay in touch on the phone. My, my younger son, actually, uh, we can't get the iPhone out of his hand, so he knows how to dial. So I'll have conversations with him throughout the day. So um, they're a little bit young, but they're, they're getting to, they'll eventually understand. Good. Is there any message that you'd like to give to the community and perhaps in Punjabi? Yeah, definitely. important updates ke march 31 tak tusi apne garbage can select karne hai teen tarah de garbage can ek recycling ek garbage te ek organic tusi organic sorry organic eco size chunda par jehde tade recycling te garbage ohna de teen sizes ne small medium te large ohna ohna vaste tonu ek size select karna pena so march 31 tak tusi peelregion.ca/carts te select kar deyo kar sakde ho जहाँ तुसी 311 डायल करके सिलेक्ट कर सकते हो जहाँ तुसी इन पर्सन गोर मेडोस मार्च सातनु जहाँ मार्च तेन सौको सेंटर ते आन के तुसी इंस्पेक्ट करके चूज कर सकते हो ते साडे बजट डिलीवरेशन शुरू होनी है एंड ऑफ मार्च ते पर उत्तो पहलो तो आदि इनपुट लेनी है पां सो फेब्रुअरी 18 नु सिटी हाल पांच तो नौ � let us know. The Ottobad, Ottobad, March Joey, Gore Meadows Recreation Center, the Sheta Novayatak, the Duja Open House Hona, definitely come uh, and get involved. Tusi Sanu Daso, Ketua Deli, Ki important, uh, and we'll base the budget based upon that. So, um, once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, you can go to the gorpit.tlo at to see email cards. Jamin would directly phone us at the no so fund at so chat at Chubby Chirono. Thank you so much, Mr. Dillon. It's been a pleasure having you on our show and getting to know you better. I hope you'll come back again sometime soon. Anytime you call me, I'll be back, Melissa. And I want to thank you and I want to thank everybody at home for tuning in. Thank you again. There's lots more coming up on Insider's View, so always tune in every week. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.